and you know we are an online credit marketplace where we help businesses get access to credit we have over 1100 lending partners we have lent over 850 million dollars and we serve all kind of businesses starting from startups to more mature businesses and we can offer products starting from micro lending products products where the loan amounts can be as low as $500 and can go up to $5 million. And what we are really proud about is that we don't sell any leads, we don't charge our SMBs any fees to give them access to credit. And we also provide value added services where incorporation or keeping your corporation active is one of the services that we provide through company corporation. Uh, you know, so the key thing is that as uh, we have tried to do in last five years is that we have tried to bring transparency into the marketplace. As a business owner, you can come in, you can just fill out one single application and we will help you to match you to the right lender. We have a set of loan specialists here in our office who will help you to walk through the whole process to package your loans and also you know, give you a free loan consultation so that you don't have to go from a lending institution or a financial institution from one to the other, get your credit pulled, uh, you know, multiple times and then still have no visibility whether you will get any kind of money or not. So since we shop around, we also ensure that you get the best terms possible in terms of the interest rates, in terms of the amount and also uh, we also offer unsecured products so, so that, you know, you have less issues with uh, putting any collateral or, or even having to put up a personal guarantee. And one of the key things that we recommend there is that if you want loans, then have a company, set up a company, because if you have a company, you can differentiate your business credit separately from your personal credit, and that way you help us to get you more money and also money at better terms, compared to somebody who is just borrowing money on their personal credit or as a sole prop. You know. uh, we just uh, the slide that shows, you know, what we do, how we do it, and how we make life easy for all our uh, small business owners. We give them a free account. We give them an ability to upload all the documents. They can pull all their text data directly from IRS, uh, and then we have the ability to do everything out there, you know, uh, to or to do it, you know, uh, or, or to take it to the next level, your business. And then, you know, we also provide uh, uh, the ability through CSC to incorporate your company. I can already see we are starting to get some questions which we will answer, you know, once the presentation is over and we would like to address all those questions, you know, in the way that helps you guys to incorporate your businesses and also make you more credit worthy. Yeah. Uh, I would like to introduce you to, you know, John. Uh, Mayor, you know, uh, so you can see his photograph, you know, he's a beautiful and handsome looking guy, you know, <laughs> and uh, he's from Company Corporation, and the best thing is that if, if any of the best to credit registered users are going uh, through us, then Company Corporation also gives special pricing, better service, and also, you know, they, they, they help uh, the business owners to become more credit worthy. So, John, I will like to uh, hand over the baton to you, you know, and so that you can, you know, uh, explain, you know, what you guys do well and, you know, how you can help the business owners, you know. Hey, thanks, Rohit. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you and excited to uh, be able to talk to all the uh, many attendees that have uh, registered for today's session and hopefully um, all those that will listen, um, listen uh, in future sessions as well. So what I would like to do today is really go through a couple of um, a couple pieces of information here and what we'll do is um, I want to go ahead and get to the uh, next slide uh, in the presentation row it so if you can just go ahead and advance that for me that would be great. Great. Well Rohit mentioned um, uh, actually if you want to back up there for a second and Rohit, if uh, you don't mind also uh, just probably muting your uh, phone line there, that would be helpful. So w one of the things that uh, Rohit mentioned before is the company corporation. And uh, 
what I wanted to do is give everyone just a little bit of background, background about who the company corporation is and uh, kind of how we fit into the small business space. Now, um, I work for an organization that's called the Company Corporation. We're based in Wilmington, Delaware, and we've been around since uh, 1899. Our two founders actually wrote the Delaware corporate law, so we have quite a uh, great history down here in Delaware, and our parent company actually works with about 90% of the Fortune 500 companies, focusing in on business compliance. And when you look at uh, the company corporation over the last um, several years, we've helped you know, uh, more than a quarter million new LLCs and corporations get started in just the last couple of years. So it's been great to see the economy just kind of bounce back. Uh, you know, it's been slow for several folks. I know a lot of people are out there looking for lending and financing through uh, services like Rohit. Uh, we're encouraged just with the amount of entrepreneurs that are looking to kind of take that leap and get into a uh, small business. So as I mentioned before, we are located here in Delaware. We've been here since 1899, but we do have offices all across the country and can help people uh, incorporate in uh, any state of their choosing as well as the District of Columbia. One of the things I did want to call out, you'll see the Better Business Bureau logo just here on the slide. You know, when you're looking at incorporating, uh, certainly uh, check all the references of the companies. There's a lot of companies out there. We're proud to have an A-plus rating with the uh, Better Business Bureau, and you'll see that there on the screen. So going, going to the next slide here, what I would like to do is uh, ask you a quick question, and that question is, uh, would you, um, you know, if you're starting a business, would you, uh, or if you're walking on a tightrope, are you going to walk on that tightrope without a net? Now, if you think back, this is about a year ago, uh, Nick Walenda uh, crossing over Niagara Falls. Uh, you know, he didn't want a net, but he did have safety wires on there. So if you are starting a small business, you got to think to yourself, do you want to create that safety net or the safety wires for your business? And one of the things that I look at is that in incorporating or forming an LLC is really that safety net uh, or the safety wires for you as you're starting your small business because it creates that brick wall between your personal and your business assets. So, you know, to take a step back, what does incorporating or forming an LLC really mean? Now, Setting up a corporation or a limited liability company is essentially creating a legal entity that is created under the laws of the state. So you choose to incorporate under the laws of the state. So it could be Delaware, it could be New York, Pennsylvania, Florida, California. Um, it's designed to be a legal entity and it has its own privileges and liabilities distinct of its owners. Now that's a fancy way of saying that it basically is a separate entity away from um, away from what the individual has. So you think about your own personal circumstance. You may have a 401k. You may have a uh, a car, uh, a savings account, checking account, investment account. All of those are personal assets, right? Your home, maybe a boat, something like that. Uh, those are personal assets. Your business, by setting up a entity, you essentially have uh, business assets that could be under that uh, business, and those would be separate from your personal assets. So uh, that is essentially a corporation or an LLC. It's got the legal capacity to enter to enter into agreements, contracts. It's separate from uh, the owner. So hopefully that uh, gives you some uh, frame of reference there. Now. What I want to do is talk a little bit about this entity puzzle. You'll probably, as you're thinking about setting up a business, uh, many people that may be on the call today may be a sole proprietor. You know, there's a couple of different things that you can think about. And what I want to do is I want to walk through some of the kind of puzzle pieces of uh, the different entities to give you a little bit of a better frame of reference. And then uh, if you want more information, I know Biz to Credit has a lot of information on their website. And then the company corporation at incorporate.com, we also do have um, comparison charts and wizards where you can find uh, more information on the different types of entities. But what I want to first start with is uh, two types of corporations. And what I want to cover is 
you have uh, essentially a couple different types of entities. You have a sole proprietorship, which is a certain type of business, right? It's just uh, Roe himself has a social security number, gets a, uh, a filing which is known as a DBA and a business license, and he can go out and start a business under his own name and he would be a sole proprietor or under a business name with a DBA and he would have kind of no brick wall between his personal and uh, business assets, right? And that's a sole proprietor. Now two sole proprietors could come together, form a partnership and have a partnership agreement that governs uh, how they operate their business. And then the next step beyond that is that you could go ahead and choose to form a business entity. And I want to talk about two types of entities. One is a corporation, one is a limited liability company. So let me first start with corporations. Now, when you look at corporations, you have two kind of classes, if you will, of corporations. And it's really just the old way that the IRS looks at those um, uh, corporations and how they uh, how they treat them. So let's start with the C corporation. A C corporation, um, just like the S corporation, it is a separate legal entity from uh, the shareholders. You do have uh, limited liability. Um, both of the corporations are run by board of directors. So when I talk about LLCs in a second, just keep in mind that the corporation is run by a board of director. You must have yearly uh, board meetings. And there's no limit on ownership. And taxation could be uh, double taxation for a C corporation, meaning taxed on the business and then also taxed on any um, um, uh, shareholder dividends. Um, now, the C corporation, and we'll talk a, probably a little bit about this uh, a little later in today's session, but a C corporation really is when you look at the large companies. Now, here in Delaware, about 65% of the Fortune 500 are incorporated here in Delaware. 1718 of the top Fortune 25 companies are based here in Delaware. A lot, most of those companies are set up as C corporations. Most of them are. They're set up as C corporations. A lot of companies that are looking to get um, angel investing or venture capital funding, um, private equity funding, they all look for that C corporation. A lot of those uh, venture funds or venture uh, firms will also be looking at the state that you're uh, formed in uh, with that C corporation. Now, the S corporation, uh, it's the subchapter S corporation, it's basically you set up a corporation and then you're electing through an IRS form, it's form 2553, and you elect to be treated as a subchapter S, which basically means that you have pass-through taxation. And this is uh, actually a very popular entity for small business owners. And one of the reasons for that is that you have pass-through taxation, which basically means that if you are a, uh, a one-person um, company or if you own the company outright or if you let's say you have a couple owners you basically take any profit or loss of that business and you pull it through pass through and you put it you file it on your own personal income taxes on a schedule C so um, you know those are two classes of corporations you have the C corporation which tends to be your larger companies if you're thinking about going public it's certainly something that uh, you want to keep in mind. This S corporation is something that a lot of small business owners do. The one thing that you do have to keep in mind with an S uh, corp is that you do have a limit on how many people can own shares in an S corporation. So I believe it's around 100, but you do have some uh, restrictions there. Now, I mentioned before the LLC. The LLC is actually a relatively newer type of business entity. It's been around since around 1997 or so. It was originally uh, created out, uh, I believe the state of Wyoming was one of the first ones to recognize the, uh, the LLC. Uh, it's been gaining it, uh, in popularity over the last uh, 15 years or so. Uh, we now see about 70% of our small business owners that come to us are forming an LLC. Now, one of the things to think about, too, is that you could start off as an LLC and then switch over to a corporation. You can also 
take a corporation and switch over to an LLC down the road. Uh, however, with that, there could be some taxable uh, implications. So we see a lot of small business owners choosing to start with an LLC and then maybe uh, migrating or transferring over to a corporation uh, uh, down the road in their business activities. But as I mentioned before, corporations are run by board of directors. They must have yearly board meetings. You have to keep annual uh, meeting minutes. An LLC has less administrative requirements uh, with the entity. Now, it's run by what's known as members, so owners of that uh, entity, they're known as members. There's no meeting requirements, and you're governed by what's uh, known as an operating agreement. So your LLC is governed by an operating agreement, which is basically the rules of how you want to structure and run your LLC. Your corporations are run by bylaws, so they set uh, the meeting requirements and minutes all in those bylaws. The operating agreement for the LLC, you can structure uh, among the members on how you want to run uh, your business. You do have pass-through taxation for an LLC, so similar to the subchapter S, uh, you would have that tax flexibility uh, there with uh, the entity. So you can see that um, a lot of small business owners are looking at uh, either a subchapter S corporation or an LLC. And again, the LLC has gained in popularity, and we're seeing about 70% of our small business owners uh, choosing that business entity. Now, w why does a small business owner uh, look to incorporate? Well, there's really a couple uh, reasons, or the main reasons that we see that small business owners look to incorporate. Um, your first would be personal asset protection, uh, looking to set up that brick wall between your personal and your business assets. Um, you gain some tax, flexibil uh, tax flexibility, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, additional credibility for your business, I'll get into that. Less risk of an audit, and then uh, name protection. So let's talk a little bit about personal asset protection. Now, before I mention that Rohit could go ahead and start out his, uh, his business, uh, go out, start off on his own, get a business license, maybe a DBA, and just start his business, right? Now, let's say if Rohit decided that he wanted to open up a bakery and went out on his own, started a bakery. He's located in uh, uh, New York City, so you know he chooses a location and uh, sets it up right on the street corner and has a great little bakery. It's doing really well, and uh, somebody comes in and uh, drinks coffee and burns themselves on their coffee, right? Happened at McDonald's, right, a couple of years ago. Now, if somebody sues Rohit, uh, if he chooses not to incorporate, his personal assets might be exposed uh, in with the liabilities of that, that business. So he's putting some of those assets at risk. So um, with setting up an entity, you're setting up uh, what's known as a corporate veil or a brick wall between your personal and your business assets. That brick wall, uh, there's a couple rules that you'll just need to do, uh, follow to make sure that that uh, brick wall st stays strong and secure. We actually offer a $50,000 corporate veil guarantee as part of our uh, service. When you incorporate through us, we help educate you on how you can keep that wall strong and secure. If you do uh, happen to get sued and somebody pierces your corporate veil, but you followed all of our steps, we would actually reimburse you up to $50,000 in any type of legal fees. But uh, a good example of one of those steps to keep your corporate veil strong and secure, it's not commingling your personal funds and your business funds. So setting up a personal uh, checking account, setting up or getting a business uh, credit card account, business checking account, um, keeping those funds separate. So when you do personal things, you take it out of personal expenses um, or personal assets. You're doing business activities. You're taking them out of business funds. So uh, that's just one example of one of the ways that you can keep that brick wall strong and secure. But personal asset protection is really one of the key reasons why we see people uh, looking to incorporate. Now, 
I mentioned uh, potential tax savings. One of the things um, I want to illustrate here, and um, you know, by all means, uh, when you're thinking about your own tax situation, you should always look at uh, your own specifics. You should consult your tax uh, specialist or your CPA. I just want to give you some guidelines here. Uh, by all means, I'm not uh, trying to provide any type of legal or um, tax advice. I just want to give you some guidelines. And then for your specific situation, uh, always consult your tax uh, specialist. But one of the things that uh, with an entity that you can do is that you can engage in um, uh, basically income splitting where uh, some of the money is being taken as salary or commissions and then some of the money is being taken as uh, distribution. So let's say in the first scenario, the sole proprietor, you're taking a salary of $60,000, you're going to be taxed um, on that $60,000 in one type of treatment and you can see what your tax bill at the bottom would be $20,000. But in a S corporation or an LLC, uh, with the pass-through taxation, and the way that you would be taking $40,000 at salary and then a distribution at $20,000, you would actually be paying, um, you know, your total taxes would be about $16,000, $17,000. So you're going to be having some tax savings depending on the way that you set up your salaries, commissions, distributions uh, through your entities. So that might be another way that people look at how they look to uh, set up uh, what type of en entity uh, decision that they have. Now, one of the other things I mentioned is additional credibility. Um, you know, in this world where you can easily go out and start a business, uh, one of the ways that you want to um, really try and scale your business, try and grow fast, is start to play with some of the larger companies that out that are out there. I know. Rohit's been successful as an entrepreneur uh, developing a service that uh, can go ahead and assist some of the major financial institutions uh, in the country. And by working with large companies, you know, they may want to see that you do have uh, an INC or an LLC after your name because it gives you some instant authority, uh, some additional credibility, you know, consumers, vendors, partners. They're, they're looking for a business that may be incorporated and may give uh, just that little touch of additional credibility when they're making decisions on who might win the bid or uh, what company do they choose to uh, work with. So that's, that's another reason why we're seeing small businesses, even online businesses, they want the LLC or the INC after uh, their business name. Now, I thought this was interesting. This was uh, way back, uh, probably about a couple years now, two, two years now, but uh, I remember seeing this article in the Wall Street Journal, and the headline was, uh, IRS statistics uh, indicate that you are 10 times more likely to be audited as a sole proprietor than as an S Corp or an LLC. So just something to keep in mind, there potentially could be less risk of an audit. Um, uh, if you have an entity versus being a, a sole proprietor. Uh, an article uh, I thought that was interesting that was back in the Wall Street Journal a couple of years ago. Um, now, name protection. You know, in most states, uh, other businesses may not file your exact corporate or LLC name if you already have that uh, set up. So let's say uh, I have John's Plumbing. I'm located here in Delaware. Uh, I want to go ahead and make sure that I have the right to use the name John's Plumbing here in the state of Delaware by incorporating. I would have uh, uh, rights to that name here, and then I would get my uh, business license all set up. Uh, also, the other thing about um, name protection, it's also ease of ownership. So think about it, it this way. You're going to get into a small business for a whole handful of reasons. We tend to see a couple reasons being uh, the main drivers of why somebody would start a business, right? One, lifestyle. Somebody doesn't want to work for a large corporation. They don't want to work for somebody else. They want to work for themselves. They want to have the freedom. They want to be able to pick and choose the hours that they work. Um, another reason why people are looking to own their own business, um, 
they want to have some type of exit strategy. They want to get into a business. They want to work in it. Uh, they want to try and develop it, scale it, and then 5, 10, 15 years, 2 years, depending on what their growth strategy is, they're going to look to try and exit that business. The other piece of exiting a business is maybe handing down that business to a future generation of your family members. Maybe your goal is to build a business and then hand it off to your children or nieces, nephews, that type of thing. Now, when you're doing that and you're looking for that exit strategy, having an entity makes it very clean from an ease and a transfer of ownership. You have something that you can sell. You can have something that you can sell to an investor. If you want somebody to uh, invest into your business, you can sell uh, shares or membership in an LLC. So uh, certainly another reason why people are looking to incorporate in another benefit that you have out there. So it really makes sense. You think about these main reasons why people are looking to incorporate. You've got personal asset protection. You got tax flexibility, you got additional credibility, you got less risk of an audit, and you've got name protection. So just a couple of key uh, benefits of why people are looking to incorporate. Now, uh, funding and growth, you know, uh, this is really right in Rohit's uh, wheelhouse here is funding. How do you get funding uh, for your business? Now, I just mentioned some of the exit strategies that you're thinking about, uh, but having that entity really helps from a funding standpoint because you have a mechanism of where that money can go into. You can have a business checking account. Um, you can sell shares of your company. You can sell membership, uh, and then you can sell that business. I also mentioned before uh, venture capital firms that are looking for Delaware C corporations to invest into. So having that type of structure really helps uh, be set up properly, be able to accept that type of funding, and then really grow and accelerate that growth. So something that you want to think about uh, as you're trying to decide between sole proprietor and uh, uh, some type of business entity, have more opportunities to uh, or easier opportunities to take some type of funding uh, into your business. Now, uh, moving on here, I want to talk a little bit about ways to incorporate. Now, uh, you'll see here on this picture of the laptop the uh, home page of incorporate.com. This happens to be uh, one of the websites of the company corporation. We market through incorporate.com. We also market through llc.com. They are two great resources where you can learn the ins and outs of incorporating. You can do comparison charts. You can get free uh, reference guides. You can watch uh, film footage from successful entrepreneurs. You can uh, learn uh, the ins and outs of different states that you're thinking about incorporating in. But I want to talk to you a little bit about ways that you can incorporate. And what I like to do is I equate it to the income tax scenario. So there's really three ways that you can incorporate. Now, if you're the type of person that does your income taxes by going to the IRS's website, downloading the forms, or getting those forms, I think, from the post office. They used to have them at the post office. I don't know if they still do or your local library. If you get those forms, you sit down with a pen and a pencil, and you fill those out, and you're comfortable doing it, you can go ahead and incorporate on your own. You can get those forms from the state, and you can struggle with a pen or a pencil and fill out that, the document, send them in, and then you got to deal with worrying back and forth with the state, right? Same thing in that income tax scenario. You send it in, and you're working with the IRS right on your taxes. That's one w way that you can do it. Now, in the income tax scenario, another way that you can file your income taxes and prepare them is you can work with a service company. Now, in that scenario, you might work with H&R Block or Jackson Hewitt or TurboTax. You know, millions of Americans work with TurboTax. It's a service, right? You pay a, a fee for the software. They're doing a service. They're helping you prep your taxes so you can go ahead and uh, get those filed. Well, the company corporation is a service company in the incorporation space, and we offer uh, two ways to incorporate. You can incorporate on our website, which you'll see uh, here on the screen. 
And then we also have a call center that's staffed with internally certified uh, incorporation specialists that all they do is they talk to small business owners each and every uh, day, thousands of times each and every month, uh, looking to incorporate their businesses. And we can't tell you specifically what to do, but we can tell you what the other pizza shop owner did uh, or what 70% you know, of our business owners form in LLC. Uh, and we can talk to you a little bit about the process of what to expect. So you can incorporate through an incorporation service company like ours, and you can do it either online or over the phone. It takes less than 10 minutes. And then your third way is in the income tax scenario that I mentioned. You can do it yourself. You can use a TurboTax or H&R Block type service. Well, your other option is you can go to a CPA or a tax specialist. In the incorporation space, you can go to an attorney. So you're paying a higher price fee to get that done through either an attorney or a CPA. And um, when you look at the service companies, we're offering it at a fraction of the cost, and we're doing that service for you. Now, just moving on here uh, through some of the information, you know, one of the big questions that comes up is where to incorporate. What type of state or what state do I want to incorporate in? And you'll see the map of the United States here. You can see, uh, you know, a lot of the states uh, that we see that have a lot of popularity tend to be those states where we have some larger population centers, New York, Florida, Texas, California. It's where the population is where people are looking to incorporate. Well, the other couple states that people look to incorporate in are Delaware, Nevada, Wyoming, a little bit of Vermont. Uh, just to name a couple of states that may not have huge population centers, but people are looking to incorporate. Now, the rule of thumb that we've seen with most small business owners is that you incorporate in your home state. So going back to Rohit's uh, bakery on the corner, you know, you may look to incorporate in New York because that's where you're doing the most amount of your business. Now, if let's say Rohit wanted to take that business, his bakery, and turn it into a uh, a Panera or a Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts, and he had this uh, global vision of taking it uh, national or international, you may look to incorporate in a state like Delaware or Nevada. Delaware specifically because of a long uh, history of corporate cases and the law is very predictable for uh, corporations in equity cases here with our chancery court. But rule of thumb is most small business owners look to incorporate in their home state. Now what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about just how easy it is to incorporate in. We make it um, really easy to, we make it really uh, we boil down about 10 easy steps. I want to just talk a little bit about these 10 easy steps. So your first step in incorporating is choosing the name of your business. So what do you want to, what do you want to call your business? What we can do is we can do a name search for you, make sure that that name is available at the state. Uh, a lot of times uh, small business owners will match up that business name with a URL or a domain name that's available. So going back to John's Plumbing, uh, LLC.com, see if that's available, and then maybe select that as my uh, entity name. Maybe there's something that has some type of emotional attachment that you're just going to use as a holding company uh, for real estate or for uh, different products or inventions that you might have. Maybe you want to name it after your children or uh, a street that you used to live on. You know, those are all considerations that you have with establishing the name of your business. Your next step is the state. We just talked about that. You want to choose uh, a state that you feel comfortable uh, having your business uh, located in. States do charge fees to have your business formed in, so that might be another consideration. Um, structure is deciding between an LLC or a corporation. Again, 70% of our business owners that come to incorporate.com are choosing to form a limited liability company. Uh, you have to identify what your purpose of your company is. It's really for uh, state reporting uh, information. So uh, some states allow you to put uh, vague 
statements like any lawful business. Other states uh, do require you to put some type of industry down, so maybe technology, food services, retail, that type of thing. Uh, length of service really only has to do with LLC. So um, let's say if you have a rental property that you're looking to form an LLC for, you have the opportunity to say, I want to set up an LLC for my rental apartment that I intend to sell in two years or a year. I'm going to go in, fix it up, and then flip that property. Uh, you can set up an LLC that will uh, dissolve after a certain amount of time. So maybe it's six months, a year, two years. You can set up that length of the LLC, or you can allow that to uh, exist in what's called perpetuity. So it just goes on forever. Uh, you determine the shares of stock. If you're setting up a corporation, what your uh, par value of those shares would be, and we can assist you with uh, what the most common amounts are. You identify who your key executives are of the business. Um, you provide an, an address of the business where you want legal documents being sent. Uh, and then with us, you simply just choose a package and a price option, and then um, you have some next steps. So just to give you a, a frame of reference of kind of how we operate, uh, we would take that document and then uh, file um, uh, that document with the Secretary of State's offices. Um, the Secretary of State receives uh, those articles of formation. They send it back to us. We do some prepping and reviewing of that information. You can either then file your own EIN on um, which is your employer identification number. It's your tax number. Uh, if you're operating it as a sole proprietor, you might use your social security number. As an entity, you're looking to um, get what's known as an EIN number for your business, and that's something that we can assist with you. Um, and then um, um, if you did set up a, uh, a C corporation and you choose not to be a C corporation and you want to elect the S uh, corporation, you would just simply fill out your form 2553 and you can do that. So we make it very easy on the front end. It's a 10-minute process. Uh, and then on the back end, we're doing a lot of the uh, prep and the review of the documents that are going back and forth. And then um, the last step here, opening up a business bank account, you'll have your information for your articles of the incorporation or your certificate of formation, and you can get that bank account set up. And then uh, working with Rohit, you can go ahead and get some uh, funding set up uh, for your business so you can go ahead and uh, get yourself uh, off to uh, the right start. So with that, I want to go ahead and uh, just open up the uh, floor to any questions that we do have during today's session. Um, and uh, Rohit, uh, I don't know if you want to throw out any questions uh, that have come in. Uh, I'll be happy to address any questions that we do have and then uh, certainly uh, incorporate.com and I know Biz to Credit's uh, website both have some uh, great informational uh, tools and uh, uh, great comparison guides, that type of thing, to uh, check out to learn more about the process. Yeah, so John, there was one question uh, about, you know, one of the persons who owns a retail uh, clothing uh, store and, uh, you know, they want to transition from a sole prop to a corporation, you know, and the question was uh, to do an LLC actually. And what their question is, what are the negatives related to the inventory value at the end, at the year end, when it comes to uh, basically the taxes piece? You know, if they if they incorporate into an LLC on a sole cost. Uh, well, a great question, uh, Rohit. From a tax standpoint, uh, not knowing anybody's uh, individual uh, taxes. Uh, you'll want to probably consult your uh, tax specialist on your own individual taxes, but uh, by setting up an LLC from a sole proprietor, a couple things to think about uh, would be you do have some uh, fees from a business entity standpoint, so you wouldn't need to uh, pay a state fee to form that business entity. And then for the privilege of doing business in a state each and every year, uh, you would be paying a... Um, 
a, uh, a, a state fee there. So one of the things to think about when you're considering the sole proprietorship versus an LLC is certainly the uh, cost of setting up the entity and then maintaining the entity. But that's offset by any uh, uh, asset protection that you would get from uh, the entity and then also any type of future plans that you might have about selling or taking on investors uh, on that. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and unmute the audience. So if any of you have any other questions, please feel free to um, to speak up and um, and let us know. Any other questions from anyone? Well, if that's it. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Hear you. I was curious I was about, about finding out about more about the different states and their requirements. John, John, do you want to take that one? And also, if you're not if you're not asking a question, can you put your phone on mute to cut down on the echo? John, are did we lose you, John? Oh, sorry, I had you muted. Okay, John, sorry. Can you can you hear us? Okay, guys, I'm sorry. It looks like we are we're having some technical difficulties with sound. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the meeting. Or if somebody wants to just put the question on a chat so we can answer it also, you know. All right. Well, we're we are having some technical difficulties, and I really apologize. But we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. I'm going to go ahead and email all of you um, afterwards. And if you have any any more specific questions for Rohit or for John, feel free to send them over, and we will get your questions answered. We're also going to post a copy of this webinar to the Biz Two Credit website, and um, I intend to send it to all of you over email as well. And thank you so much for attending. Um, we really appreciate it, and John, um, that was an excellent presentation, and I think we all learned a lot. And Rohit, thank you so much for being here today as well, and um, stay tuned for future webinars from those two credits. Thanks, everyone.